After celebrating Fizzle's defeat within Thunder Ridge and providing your reward, Orgnil turns your attention to other Burning Blade activity within Duratar. One of our shamans, Margaz, knows more of the Burning Blade's corruption. He speaks of a cave called Skull Rock in the mountains, just outside of Orgrimmar, that shelters a large band of Burning Blade cultists. Before you go to Skull Rock, speak with Margaz. He is wise and his counsel is valued. He is camped to the northeast between the coast and Dragolch Ravine. Follow his advice, but whatever Margaz says, Nudnik, I still want you to crush those cultists. So far, your journeys have been fraught with peril due to the meddling of the Burning Blade cult within Duratar. Within even the Horde's training grounds, the Valley of Trials, you uncovered a coven of demons summoned to Azeroth by these deranged cultists. Striking down the leadership there led you to Senjen Village, where the trolls reported corruption of their brethren and sickly rituals taking place on their ancestral lands of the Echo Isles. Upon reporting to Orgnil and Razor Hill, you were told of yet another band of cultists lurking deep within Thunder Ridge. In many of these cultist camps, you found ritual sites and sacrificial altars surrounded by the bones of your troll and orc brethren, many of the corrupted cultists standing beside demonic minions, their own flesh shriveled and gray from tampering and dark magics. Your fellow members of the Horde have also faced the Burning Blade's demonic forces. The shamans of the Horde discovered yet another cavern infested with cultists above the Drygold Ravine in their quest to scavenge some of their regents, and a contingent of priests were sent to the Echo Isles to dispel the juju heap Salazane used to corrupt the normal flows of magic in Duratar. And now, Orgnil reports the cult has a major base of operations within Skull Rock, just outside the Horde's capital city of Orgrimmar. Hopefully this shaman Margaz can guide the Horde towards a strategy capable of ousting the Burning Blade from your homeland. Venturing northeast from Razor Hill and north along the coast, you spot a small oasis standing out among the desert backdrop of Duratar. In the center of a few small pools of water, you see a lit campfire and a small orcish tent structure. Approaching the camp, you find a lone orc shaman who appears to be expecting you. Welcome, Nudnik. Word reached me of your coming and your exploits in Durator. You are a warrior of growing skill and renown. Stay on the pure path and your future will be great indeed. I am glad Orgnil sent you to me. The cult's threat is growing. The Burning Blade has infested the cave east of Orgrimmar known as Skull Rock. Inside that cave they perform vile rituals and burn their own flesh with searing collars. By wearing these collars, I believe the cultists attune themselves to demonic power. But to confirm this, I must have a collection of the collars to study. Go to Skull Rock and gather searing collars from the cultists you find there. Bring them to me and I will uncover their secrets. You can see the entrance to Skull Rock in the distance just north of Margaz's camp. Venturing towards the cave, you recall mention of this cave while you were in the War Chief's chambers, reporting to Vol'jin. With more experience under your belt, the War Chief himself now asks for your assistance. All members of the Horde are equal in my eyes, Nudnik. We have all suffered many burdens, and if not for wisdom and honor, then we would be no better than the Scourge or my people while our blood was tainted by the demon Manoroth. It is your duty to aid the Horde and to defend our way of life. But it is also your duty to know when quarter and compassion should be given to friend and foe alike. Understand this well. This is the new horde, not some demon-spawned army who lack free will. One thing I will not tolerate are traitors in our midst, Nudnik. But I would be a fool to play my hand so early. It would not sufficiently cut the corruption out of our lands and would only cause the infection to grow worse. But you, a young adventurer, could go places my agents could not, could learn the truth, could find the true head of the beast. If you are brave enough, then enter Skull Rock to the east of Orgrimmar. Find a lieutenant's insignia off one of the Burning Blade there and return to me. Tasked with a quest from the War Chief himself, you venture east of Orgrimmar and into Skull Rock with renewed passion for the Horde. Arriving at the cultist cave, you find members of the Burning Blade spilling forth from the dimly lit cavern. Charging into battle against the first cultist in your path, you strike him down and inspect the fell-scarred corpse. 
As Margoth said, you find a purple and white collar latched around the orc's neck. The skin around the collar burned and shriveled by demonic energies. You peel the collar from the corpse and retain the sample for Margoth's studies. Venturing deeper into the cave, the fell energy is almost palpable in the air. Many of the cultists have demonic minions serving them, which attempt to assist them in combat, but they're no match for a powerful warrior of the Horde. You strike down enemy after enemy, venturing even deeper into Skull Rock, collecting six of the demonic collars as Margaz requested, and pilfering each corpse in search of a lieutenant's insignia. Surely one cultist within this cave bears a symbol of authority, and once you liberate them from it, you can pose as one of these monsters and infiltrate their ranks. Cutting down cultists and demons alike, you approach the deepest recesses of the cave, hopeful that your actions here will assist in cutting this cancer from Duratar. You eventually come to an overlook that peers out over the deepest chamber within Skull Rock. A multitude of cultists accompanied by their fell minions surround a small pool of water. Peering down into the chamber, you see a hulking orc, even more grotesque than his corrupted brethren. His entire body is gray and shriveled, no doubt a side effect of dabbling in unholy energies. But for his physical body to be so mutilated, he must have a more frequent and direct contact with his demonic masters. It will no doubt bring your fellow members of the Horde comfort to know such a beast was put down. Jumping from the Overlook, you strike the gray-skinned monstrosity. The cultist channels shadow magic and blasts you with bolts of fell energy. The demonic attacks seem to pass by your armor and drain your very life force. Despite his best efforts and unhonorable magics, the cold steel of your blade cuts through his shriveled flesh and ends his miserable life. Even this orc does not carry any insignia designating his rank among the cultists. But you do find something of interest. A glowing red gem, pulsating as if a fire rages within it. Placing your hands on the gem, you are suddenly plunged into darkness, and a voice booms in your mind as if emanating from all around you. Gezzas. Gezzas, report! There is word of your discovery in Skull Rock. You must prepare for an attack. Gazas, I order you to speak. Speak, or I will make sure Nehru Fireblade knows of your presence, and he will descend on you with swift brutality. Do not test your skills against Nehru. Gazas, are you there? It seems as though this orc was in direct contact with leadership within the cult, and somehow the cultists knew of your coming. How fortunate to have struck down this Gazuz before the Burning Blade could prepare for your coming, or worse, have led an assault on Orgrimmar. You should seek out this Nehru Fireblade the voice spoke of, and see why the cult's leadership would mention him specifically. Continuing your onslaught against the cultists, you strike down any of the corrupted orcs that cross your path, all the while searching for a lieutenant's insignia. You blaze a trail through the winding passages of Skull Rock, leaving only death in your wake. Yet no matter how many cultists you strike down, there seems to always be more ahead, as if they're appearing out of thin air. Finally, after cutting through innumerable cultist fodder, you fill an orc bearing a black and red insignia. Finally, the display of Burning Blade rank Thrall is seeking. You cut down the last of the cultists between yourself and the open air happy to be free of the demonic stench of Skull Rock, and return to Margaz's camp just south of the cave. Presenting the searing collars to Margaz, he begins to examine the demonic devices. Good. Hiding within these collars is the secret behind the burning blade, and I will uncover that secret. As Margaz attempts to access the Collar's secrets via shamanistic means, demonic energy lashes out and strikes the orc. Ah! Nudnik, unlocking the secret of these Collars is beyond my skills. The searing Collars you brought me are powerful demonic implements. Divining their origin is, I'm afraid, beyond my skills as a shaman. We will need a warlock to study them. Take a searing Collar to Niru Fireblade. Although he is a skilled warlock, he professes to use his powers to thwart demons, 
and claims his research in the occult is benign. Be that true or false, we may need his aid against the demonic cult in Duratar. You may find Nero and Orgrimmar in the cleft of shadow. So, Nero Fireblade is a known warlock within the Horde. Supposedly, he is helping thwart the demonic forces in Duratar, but Margaz seems to harbor some disdain for him. You will bring him the Searing Collar as Margaz requested but you are curious how he will answer when confronted with the message you intercepted from the cultist Gazaz. You find the warlock Niru Fireblade within the cleft of shadow beneath the center plateau in Orgrimmar, a dark, dank cave where the seedier classes and trades of the Horde converge. Approaching the orc, he has a bit of a monologue he shares with newcomers to his abode. Listen closely to what you are told and do not quickly trust or distrust. For even friends serve their own ends, warrior. Our great war chief knows this, and to prove that there are warlocks within the Horde who do not wish to destroy it from within or gain control over it, I have volunteered to aid our young leader in any way I can. Presenting the seared collar to the warlock, he remarks, Ah, and where did you get this? Good Margos and Razor Hill sent you to me, did he? Well, let me take a closer look. Since the last great war, when the Burning Legion was defeated, I have searched for sources of demonic corruption in orc society. The collar you brought me confirms my fears. It belongs to the Burning Blade, a cult that rallies around an item of demonic power. It is called the Demon Seed, and it resides in the Barrens atop Dreadmist Peak. It must be destroyed. Go to Farwatch Post on the border of the Barrens to the west and speak with my assistant, Axelah. He will direct you further. It seems the Burning Blade's corruption spreads not only within Duratar, but also in the neighboring Barrens. You will be sure to pay a visit to Nehru's apprentice in the future. For now, you confront Nehru about the communication device you found in Skull Rock. Examining the gemstone, the warlock states... Intriguing. The voice you heard mentioned my name? I am known for hunting down enemies of our war chief, but it is strange that I was singled out. Stranger still that the Burning Blade cultists from whom you recovered this pendant have a name so close to my own. I must study this pendant. I must study and must ponder the meaning of its message. Thank you for bringing this to my attention, Nudnik. You have done your people a great service. Well, perhaps this warlock's intentions are pure. As you turn to leave, Nero asks a task of you. The primary task set upon me by our great war chief is to root out the creatures responsible for infesting our lord's great city with demonic influence. The burning blade is one threat, but there are others. The Searing Blade, for instance, who make their home in Ragefire Chasm, secretly attempting to subvert innocent members of the Horde. If they are to be stopped, then their leader must be slain. A Felguard named Taragaman the Hungerer. Kill him and his heart will appease Thrall. Of this I am sure. Surely destroying a demon commander so near to the Horde's core would be a great feat. You accept Nero's task and return to Thrall's chamber to speak on what you have uncovered about the Burning Blade. Do you have the insignia yet, Nudnik? It will be a vital tool in infiltrating what I believe is the greatest threat to the Horde, and finally finding peace in our new home. You will learn how intricate a web men and orcs alike can weave when they are motivated by greed and power. The hidden agendas, the corruption, all of it will become clear. You will find yourself in the midst of a war you never knew existed. Good, Nudnik. The spirits be praised. Perhaps you are the one who will finally put my greatest fears to rest. Who would have suspected someone so young and so brave would rise up a champion of our cause? You remind me of myself when I was younger. I will ensure that you are justly rewarded for your efforts if we both survive the coming storm. But there is time for more praise later. You've not accomplished anything in comparison to what you will face, but this is a good start. 
it would be wise to explain to you the depths at which our enemies will go to hide themselves under our noses. Know this first and foremost. Our enemy is the Shadow Council. No matter what task I give you or who I ask you to act against, know that one simple fact. Many cults exist within the Council, but only to hide its actions against the foolish. Groups like the Burning Blade, the Argus Wake, and the Searing Blade are all tools of the Council. Consider them one and the same. Now let us see if this insignia you found is worth the effort. There is a warlock within the city who believes he has my trust. He does not know that I realize where his true loyalties lie. He is in fact the leader of the Burning Blade. But do not rush off to do battle with him. He has a purpose. And we shall use him against our enemies. Take the insignia to him in the Cleft of Shadow here in Orgrimmar. Speak to him and see if he believes you are one of their own. Then return here to me. So, this Nehru Fireblade is not to be trusted. It would seem Margaz's intuition was right. You head back to the Cleft of Shadow, glad to take part in ridding the Horde of the Burning Blade's demonic corruption. Approaching Nehru, he begins his monologue as he did when you first met the Orc. No doubt his fell-addled brain paying no mind to the adventurers of the Horde and focused on undermining the Warchief. You cut off the Warlock, presenting the Burning Blade Lieutenant's insignia. You may speak frankly, Nehru. Ah, one of our own. It is good to see our numbers are growing so rapidly that I can no longer keep track of the faces of our members. That fool Thrall thinks I am working hard to cleanse the image of warlocks and prove we are his servants. Idiot. The Burning Legion will make ash of this entire world after it drains it completely. It is good to see the Burning Blade is taking over where the Shadow Council once failed. Naive fool. The Burning Blade is the Shadow Council. There are many cults and organization under the Council's rule but all of them are just extensions of their will. I may lead the Burning Blade, but I am still just as much of a pawn to the Council as you are to me. Look at the Searing Blade. Most of them think they are becoming the next rising group of powerful warlocks, that they will replace the Shadow Council. So the Searing Blade is expendable? Ha <laughs> ha, save for their leaders, the satyr Basilan and the warlock Jergosh. Yes, all of them. That is why I constantly send Thrall's worshippers at them. It gives Thrall the impression that I am weeding out the evil in the bowels of his great city. The victory in reality is twofold. Kill Thrall's faithful and test the strength of those in the Searing Blade to see if they are truly worthy of joining me. Is there anything you would have of me? I will make it known to you. You are obviously already proving yourself in our ranks to become a lieutenant so quickly. Perhaps you can return to me later and I will have a task for you. The council adores those skilled in the arcane, but servants of all kinds are always welcome, no matter their profession. So this sick warlock scum has been knowingly sending warriors of the Horde to their death within Ragefire Chasm. The dark magic these warlocks dabble in is sickening enough, but to undermine all Thrall and the Horde as a whole stands for... disgusting. But Thrall was right. You now know Nehru's true motives and who among the Searing Blade he values. You rush to report this information to Thrall. Excellent, most excellent warrior. What you have done this day is only the first step in a much broader foundation. A foundation that we will build the destruction of the Shadow Council on once and for all. Tell me all that he said, and leave not one word out. It may be more important than you realize. Hmm, leaders of the Searing Blade. This concerns me most. If they are the ones of value to Nehru, then those are who we must target first. This satyr, Basilan, and the other Nehru mentioned, what was he, a warlock, must be slain. Return to the Cleft of Shadow and enter Ragefire Chasm, the Nick. Find these two leaders of the Searing Blade and kill them, but be careful not to let Nehru know that it is you who did this. You must retain your identity as one of his brothers-in-arms. Excellent. 
With Niru Fireblade's true intentions known, you can gather a group of adventurers and cut out the demonic cancer from beneath Orgrimmar. Of course, with the Searing Blade threat being so close to the heart of the Horde's capital, there are others who share the Warchief's concern. The need to infiltrate Ragefire Chasm is obvious across all factions of the Horde. Your fellow adventurers may share these quests with you, or... Within the Royal Quarter of Undercity, you find Bragor Bloodfist, the Horde Emissary to the Undead. Bragor desires the cultist's demonic texts be gathered and kept from any that would use their powers against the Horde. Listen up, warrior. You may not know this, but Orgrimmar's got a problem. Deep in Ragefire Chasm, a sect of the Shadow Council called the Searing Blade performs their sinister work. They're mainly orcs, and I can't trust sensitive information in the hands of the grunts there. That's where you come in. They should have two books in their possession. I want them kept out of the hands of the Searing Blade and the Forsaken alike. Bring them to me directly. And on the Elder Rise in Thunderbluff, you find Magatha Grimtotem has led her own efforts against the evils of Ragefire Chasm. Approaching the Elder, you're met by one of her servants. Well met, warrior. You may speak to me unless you have direct business with my mistress Magatha. I deal with most of her tasks for her so she can concentrate on more important matters. Perhaps there are some things we could discuss before you seek an audience with her. Beneath the city of Orgrimmar, a stout creature known as Trog started coming to the surface from deep below the lava-filled tunnels. In her ever-benevolence, Magatha thought to make peace with the creatures, but they turned on her diplomats, killing them. She will not allow such treatment of the torn people and now consider the creatures a threat to all of the Horde. She asks that you put an end to this trog threat before it overwhelms the Horde from below. Find Ragefire Chasm and destroy them all. The trogs are not the only thing that interested Magatha in Ragefire Chasm. She has heard word that one of her servants, a Mar Grimtotem, found something peculiar while in the chasm, but he never made it out to show her what. She'd like Mar's body found, if it still exists, and any signs of what he found while attempting to speak to the Trogs. Return to Magatha any items of interest, and I'm sure she would be very generous in her reward. Again, seek the chasm in the darkest areas of Orgrimmar. You now have five mighty tasks before you. Being an outstanding warrior of the Horde, you are eager to charge into Ragefire Chasm and make the Searing Blade and Burning Blade cultists rue the day they sought to harbor demonic corruption within the Horde. However, the beasts are unlike any you have faced before. You will likely need the defensive capabilities taught to you by your wise warrior elders, the healing abilities of a fellow member of the Horde, and several others trained in combat to dispose of the foes you will face. You will gather a great warband and lead them to victory against the Searing Blade. For the Horde!